T minus 40 seconds and counting. External tank heaters to ET to orbiter structural attachments turned off. T minus 31 seconds and holding. The launch director, Bob Seek, announcing that we have uh, uh, several minutes that we can hold at this particular point. Uh, we are in a hold because of weather conditions at the overseas uh, transoceanic abort sites. If we pick up the clock at this point, we would go for auto-sequence start. Uh, this is when Atlantis so is... So what they have done, they've taken Atlantis to the edge of the cliff. It's like taking a candle and lighting a match and waiting for the match to burn down to your finger. They are standing at the edge. CNN's John Zarelli is at the Kennedy Space Center and joins us now. John, it looks like uh, they're going to take it to the edge of the cliff and wait until the window closes. Well, they just said now we have a go for launch. I would assume they're going to pick up that count any second now. But uh, as you mentioned, the uh, transatlantic landing, alternative landing sites, uh, there's a weather problem at one of those sites. We don't know which one it is because this is a Defense Department, uh, Defense Department launch. The one at now they're counting, Tom. Back to you. We have a go for auto-sequence start. The SRB hydraulic power units have started and moving those engine nozzles T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start, 7, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower. through maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three engines now at 65%. Atlantis been given a go at throttle up. All three main engines back up to 104%. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Three good engines, three good APUs. Relative velocity about 2,900 feet per second. Downrange 12 nautical miles. One minute fifty, three engines up at 104 percent. You can see the solid rocket boosters have just separated away from Atlantis. Atlantis now relying on its three main engines to reach the orbit. An unusually clear picture of the First separation. First stage performance nominal according to the flight dynamics officer that call made to the crew. They're now passing through 204,000 feet, downrange distance 46 nautical miles. They've been given a call indicating a two-engine capability to their primary overseas landing site. Now 55 nautical miles downrange. Three engines still up and running at 104%. 
climbing at 1,500 feet per second, altitude 245,000 feet. If you have just joined us, that small white dot in the center of your screen is the Space Shuttle Atlantis. They have already gone through one of the most critical portions of the flight. The solid rocket booster separation occurred about a minute ago, and you could see the picture clearly as the solid rocket separated away from the shuttle. It's now relying on its own internal power of the three main engines. The external tank, the large cylinder, is still attached to the shuttle and uh, providing fuel for those three engines. Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Gary Cohen pulling our positions here in the control center, all reporting to go. Three good engines still up and running at 104 percent. Negative return call just went up to the crew. That indicates uh, they no longer have the capability to do a return to launch site abort. Seven nautical miles down range. These pictures that you're seeing are being provided by special long range cameras that NASA uses during the launch. The press to ATO call just uplinked to the crew. That call indicates should they lose an engine, they would have uh, sufficient velocity to press toward uh, an abort to orbit uh, case. Now 210 nautical miles downrange. Atlantis once again passing another major milestone in its flight to space. Tomiko call just made to the crew. That call indicates they have sufficient velocity to press to main engine cutoff conditions even if they lose one main engine. Atlantis now passing through 365%. Uh, the group uh, 109 call just made to Atlantis. That call indicates that should they lose two engines, they would have the capability to make their transoceanic abort landing uh, on one remaining space shuttle main engine now passing through uh, 366,000 feet. All right, what you're seeing now is a live picture at the Kennedy Space Center, the smoke remaining from the uh, blast off that occurred a few moments ago. The countdown went several times into a stop mode because of winds aloft, wind Two, shear problems. One, and now let's go back and replay the launch for you. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower. This will be about the last time that we will see or hear from NASA because this is a secret Defense Department mission. Communication between the shuttle and the ground will be limited and it will be non-existent as far as the media is concerned. Believed to be the mission objective is to launch a LaCrosse satellite, what is believed to be a LaCrosse satellite, the first in a series that will be uh, used to help the B-1 and B-2 bombers as far as uh, guidance. It will also be used to help verify that the Soviets are adhering to the treaties that have been signed. And what it does, it provides better imaging for the look-down radar that is on board. Uh, it will see through clouds, it will defoliate trees and see through the leaves and work well at night. So these are things that the United States, as far as the intelligence gathering community, if it is indeed true that is the satellite on board, have not been able to do well up until now. Once again, Atlantis is on its way to orbit, on its way to a mission of launching a spy satellite. There will be a communications blackout for the next couple of days. 
It is believed that sometime, possibly Monday morning, unless there are problems, they will return to Edwards Air Force Base in California for a landing of Atlantis and the ending of this mission. Once again, a 15-ton satellite will be launched sometime in the next probably two or three days. If there is a problem with the satellite, they have the ability, once it has been deployed, to retrieve it. They would simply uh, use explosive bolts and knock off the solar arrays and reach out with the Canadian-built robot arm, pick up the shuttle at the uh, satellite and bring it back into the cargo bay for the trip home. It is a very, very expensive satellite, believed to cost about $500 million, so they have the option of bringing it back if it doesn't work right. We, of course, will bring you continuing updates throughout the day here on CNN on Atlantis's progress, and uh, we will now uh, join, rejoin our uh, show that we were interrupted by the launch, but uh, we will come back after these messages. I'm Tom Intier.